All right, so I'm gonna do a quick walk around review of this 2021 GMC Sierra. It is a 1500 elevation series. Elevation is a trim level between SLE and SLT. This was originally the blacked out edition. It originally had black GMC uh, front and tailgate badges, but as part of the purchase, I wanted to make sure that it actually had the bold red. So that was the agreement upon purchase of actually gonna switch that back from the black to the bold red. 20 inch rims, black powder coat. Um, again, it was part of the blacked out elevation edition. Um, if I could have, I would have actually preferred to actually have just some nice eight inch polished aluminum. But for a 20 inch tire, they, they ride really nice. Um, I'm a little concerned about what the rims are gonna look like several years from now, but it's all part of, I guess, owning a truck that's got black rims. I did add the APS side steps. Um, I've had a very similar uh, set side steps like this on my 2014 Sierra Denali HD that I traded off. Um, the original design had an issue where they actually had corroded and rusted out, um, and the new style they actually had changed significantly. I do also have the Unicover Safari 1 fiberglass topper added. All this was a part of the purchase. Um, I actually did pay for the topper, but I actually just put it on the loan just to make it easier. We'll just do a quick walk around here. So this has the dual rear exhaust and this does not have the pro tailgate. This is just a standard easy lift tailgate and it is a uh, keyless. You just basically have a button to push up by the handle there, or actually there's no handle, but up to, towards the very top there. And also the key fob actually has a tailgate drop down button as well. And here's a look at the other side. So I'm gonna talk about a few things here. I'm gonna talk about the front end first. I'm gonna talk about the headlights and fog lights. So this Sierra, because the trim level has LEDs, uh, it's LED headlights with halogen turn signals. However, I will make you aware that this truck's had some modifications. Um, I did replace the front turn signals and rear turn signal and brake lights with uh, LED canvas ready bulbs. And I'll talk more about them as we go through the truck here. So with the headlights, it is a full LED. Um, the high beams are very bright. The low beams are lacking a little bit of forward distance as far as to the right and left of the beam pattern. With the fog lights, it's definitely an improvement, but I will say that the Alpha Rex Pro Series uh, aftermarket headlights I had in my previous Sierra, I thought the low beams were a lot better than this. But they're not bad. They're definitely not driving with uh, candlesticks. This also comes with um, LED fog lights. One thing I've noticed for whatever reason, I don't know why I've seen it more and more frequently that the fog lights are mounted actually a lot higher versus down the bumper. Um, not sure what they are th as far as what the thoughts are behind that. I haven't had any foggy conditions to drive into, so I can't really give you any feedback as far as whether they work or not. They do actually help illuminate the road a little better with the low beams. So for what the low beams lack, um, I would say that the um, fog lights definitely help. So these tail lights um, on the specs, they call it an LED tail lamp. And the only thing that's LED originally from the factory is there is a strip right here that illuminates at night. Um, that is irreplaceable. However, the brake light and turn signal and reverse light uh, originally came in halogen and I've actually replaced those with LED. Um, these here were an LED bulb from um, GTR lighting. They're canvas ready. However, um, they do not still draw enough current to satisfy the truck control module. So I still had to do a, a wiring harness resistor, but I actually did find one that's plug and play. And then I also replaced the tail lights um, with a, a GTR lighting as well. Um, I'm trying to think what series it is, but I'll actually put the information here in the video. It 
So I was a little disappointed to find out that in this series that it still was halogen taillights. Uh, I believe I would have bought a Silverado with RST, which is equivalent to the Elevation Sierra. I would have actually had full LED taillights except for the backup light. So I replaced the front turn signal bulbs as well when I did the rear. Um, I actually used last fit bulbs. They're a canvas ready. Um, what that means is, is they have built-in resistance to basically fool the computer in the truck that there's not a bulb there because they draw much less current. So they draw a little more current to basically uh, satisfy the control within the truck. And these were 100% plug and play. So one thing that General Motors did um, on the Sierra that's not on the Silverado is as you notice, there's a button here on the door handle. There's also a button here on the second door handle. On the Silverados, uh, I think unless you get into a higher trim package, you only have the one button here. And this will actually lock or unlock as long as the key fob is within arm's reach. So right now, if I push the button, it's locked. But if I push the button again, and it's still unlocked, but if I can push this button, I can unlock it as well. So as long as the key fob is within arm's reach of the vehicle, anybody can unlock a door or unlock all the doors. The dash, I'm not gonna get a whole lot into the interior because from my understanding is the interior hasn't changed much from the previous generation. Um, just kind of show you what the dash looks like here. It's kind of cool. And I'll start up here shortly as well. When I talk about the engine, we'll look at what the dash looks like once it's lit up. Has the uh, infotainment center or infotainment system. This does not have navigation, but it has Apple CarPlay. It also has Android Auto. So if you have a smartphone of either or, um, you can use your maps and directions from your smartphone. This came with um, the 40-20-40 split bench which I was okay with. Uh, the last truck I had the um, bucket seats in it and they're really nice, but this actually does give me the capability to have five passengers if I ever needed it, because that center console will flip up, which actually, actually has a shoulder seat belt as well. <laughs> Black interior, and this is a keyless start. Okay, as usual, General Motors has found a way to stuff 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but there's some things um, with this motor that they had to do uh, in order to fit it in this compartment. So this is an inline six. It's not a V6 um, or anything else. It's just strictly an inline six. It sounds very much like a Cummings. Um, however, it's a GM Duramax. Now, unlike Ford and Ram, GM didn't have an engine to start from. They actually built this engine from the ground up versus the Ford F-150. They actually pulled the motor from the um, Range Rover and actually had made some modifications to fit it in the F-150. And then Ram had used the 3.0 to my understanding that they had the Sprinter van and actually had uh, put that in their Ram truck. So General Motors, um, this engine's now their second model year um, with this motor and there's some things on the internet that people ran into in the first 2020 years or 2020 model year and then there was some things I've seen also in the 2021s but when I did buy this I did add the six year 100,000 mile warranty as well so one of the things I didn't want to do was actually get the first model year with the new motor. Um, unlike the 6.6 .6 liter big brother this one does not have the nylon uh, belt drive fan with the uh, servo fluid clutch. This actually has a couple of electric fans buried down underneath here. Um, I did talk about the mileage. Like I said, my was between 22 and 24 right now with about 4,000 miles on it. Um, compared to my 6.6 .6 liter that I had before, this one only has one battery versus two. And the battery is actually located right here. Sitting here, it's a pretty quiet engine for the most part. Uh, cooling fans have kicked on right now on kind of a medium speed.
This does run a specific synthetic oil that is exclusive to this Duramax. Uh, unlike the 6.6 .6 liter, that actually just uses a 1040 diesel motor and uh, diesel motor oil. This one here, like I said, uses um, something exclusive to this motor, and it's an odd size as well. It uses seven quarts, if I understood correctly. So as I mentioned, it kind of sounds like a little Cummings. Here is the air intake. Um, much like the 6.6 .6 liter previous generation, current generation, there's a hood scoop in the front. However, all the intake air comes through the grill, uh, through the baffles here, then up through this baffle diverter here and into the intake. Hence the reason why this has got a gasket here. And there's also a seal up there as well. All right, now that the truck's run, let's talk more about the headlights and signal lights. So I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick it up, but these are the DRLs right now. They're fully lit up. Um, it's still daytime yet. Um, they're pretty bright coming down the road. You can definitely pick these out on a GMC vehicle, just like the Ford and Ram as well. They're very distinct. Unlike an aftermarket that aren't quite as bright, these are very distinct. So now the headlights are on and you can see the DRLs have gone down dimmer. Um, GM, for whatever reason, went from a projector headlight in the previous generation, when they were first start getting the projectors, uh, they went back to a reflector style. However, this is a non-serviceable headlight. It is completely sealed. So if there's a failure, you have to replace the headlight. Uh, for low beam, the top and bottom, or top and middle, are lit up, and then for high beam, the bottom one lights up as well. It has a very weird bean pattern, and I'll actually show you uh, that in some images here as well. Now these DRLs don't really flicker like that as it does here on the video. The refresh rate and the uh, frame rate on the camera uh, is too slow for the, f the very fine flicker that these DRLs do have. And here's the high beams. I'm gonna bring you in really close here. All right.
So here's what the dash looks like at night. And you can adjust the brightness with some knobs here. I should mention this is a true four-wheel drive. It does have a two-speed transfer case. So a lot of the new ones now is either four-wheel drive or too high. There's no four-low. There's the infotainment system. I won't get into a lot of these features. It's a simple reason there's a lot of other videos out there that are much better than this. That's what your climate control looks like as well. So here's what the dash looks like at night, and you can actually adjust uh, right here, I believe it is. You can adjust the intensity. That's as low as it gets. We'll bring it back up here. That's as bright as it gets. High beam indicator. And then uh, fog light is off, fog light is on. Here's the infotainment center. And here's your climate control. And then to turn the cab lights on in the interior, So, it's not bad. But it could be better. I'll turn that out again. So, yeah. So that's what the Sierra looks like at night. Now this is just the basic gauge cluster. The Denali cluster is quite a bit different, but uh, compared to the Silverado, it's maybe a little bit more fancy, not much. Okay, the one last thing I wanted to talk about was is the fuel tank. General Motors, along with many other manufacturers, have adopted the capless fill. I have no idea why people think this is such a good idea, and I have no idea what's wrong with having a gas cap. You know, they always talk about, oh, it bangs into your paint. Well, then hang it up inside the door. Um, this capless fill, to me... I just feel it's a very bad idea. Now, however, there was a good thing that General Motors did. This is your def tank fill. They moved this uh, from previous generations that used to be underneath the hood uh, on the passenger side rear, and now they've actually moved it here. So the only thing with this is, is if you buy def in a jug, you gotta make sure you don't put it in the diesel. If you're using a dispenser at the pump, you won't be able to get the diesel in here, or the def in here, because if I'm understanding, the nozzle itself has a magnet that opens up a check valve um, to be able to dispense the def fluid. And as far as getting diesel in here, you'll never fit the nozzle in it. Now getting back to this capless fill, I found a solution, I actually found this on, I think it was eBay or Amazon. It's a 3D printed cap, it's just a nice fitting cap it's got a little a rabbit or a groove on the inside, and it just fits in here nice and snug. Uh, easy to get off if you need to, but it keeps all the junk out. So, I think I spent 10 bucks in that. General Motors, I have no idea. I thought you guys were better than that, but if any of just following or analysis lead. All right, so that's a quick review of this truck. It drives really nice. It's very smooth shifting. This has made it up to a 10 speed transmission. Uh, I believe it's the same transmission that's actually in the Ford F-150. I'm not sure what's going on with that, but I've been told that from several people that the transmission is the same. I've also heard that General Motors is no longer using the Allison transmission in this new generation as well in the HDs. Um, I've not confirmed that 100%, but I've actually heard it on a few different videos, so, uh, but that doesn't pertain to me on this one. So, yeah, so, it's definitely a nice truck. Uh, I actually financed this one cheaper than my previous one. It is actually a step down in trim level, but the fuel economy well makes up above and beyond uh, 
that and along with some other things as well. So in this truck will do everything that I need to do as far as towing. I think this one can pull like a little over 9,000 pounds. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this quick tour and walk around of this 2021 GMC Sierra. Questions and comments are welcome. Thanks for watching.